In this video we have a linear function f of x over a restricted domain and given this restricted domain and the fact that this is an invertible function the question posed is we need to find the domain of f inverse. So we're given the domain of f we need to find the domain of f inverse. At the end of the problem your answer should be written in interval notation as shown here and if you're doing this problem in math AS, you need only type in the values of a and b for which if you were to plug those values into this you would have your correct answer written in interval notation. My strategy to solve the problem is to look at the relationship between the domain and range of f and the domain and range of its inverse. So if you have a function f that's invertible it has an inverse function and it turns out when this happens that the domain of the original function is always the same as the range of f inverse and that the range of f is the domain of f inverse. Now if you remember our problem was to find the domain of f inverse. So to find the domain of f inverse my strategy is since I was given f and not f inverse to find the domain of f inverse I will simply find the range of f because the range of the function we were given is the same as the domain of f inverse and that was the question we were asked. So my strategy is going to be in order to find the domain of f inverse I will find the range of f and I'm going to do so graphically. I'm going to graph f over the restricted domain, determine its range, and as said before the range of f is the same as the domain of its inverse function and that's the question we are to answer. So it turns out that normally if you didn't have a restricted domain you would graph this function by saying that the y-intercept is negative 4 and you'd plot that point its slope is one-fifth and you could get a rough sketch of this just by graphing a line whose slope is one-fifth which would be found by moving up one and to the right five just to get another point and rather than going up one right five the equivalent of that going to the left would be down one left five so it would be way over here off of my screen so just to give you some idea you have some line that normally would go to the right forever and the left forever if it were not for our restricted domain. Now because we do have a restricted domain what this means is we were not supposed to graph this line for x values bigger than 6 we were only supposed to graph this line for x values less than or equal to 6. So what that means is if you look at x equals 6 and go down anything I drew to the right of 6 shouldn't have been drawn and my graph should have ended here. Likewise, I was only supposed to draw the line for x values bigger than or equal to negative 4, so to the right of negative 4. So if you looked at x equals negative 4 and drew a line down, anything to the left of negative 4 was not supposed to be drawn. So what's left is a very crude graph of my function over the interval negative 4 to 6 on the x-axis, and I can use this to help me determine the range of f and remember that the range of f is the same as the domain of its inverse. So I would find the range of f, if you remember the range is the set of all y values of the function, just by seeing that the line here takes on all y values between its lowest point and its highest point. So I need to know at the very end here if you were to plug in negative 4 what that corresponding y value would be over here and that would be the lowest that the graph goes. And if I looked over here at this endpoint at x equals 6, if I plugged x equals 6 into the equation, I would get the corresponding y value here. And that would tell me how high the graph goes. So that would give me the range of the original function. And getting the range of the original function again gives me the domain of its inverse, and I would be done with the problem. However, because this is such a crude drawing, I'd love to go to desmos.com. So here we are at a website called Desmos. I'm going to type my equation that I desire in this area here. My equation was 1 fifth x. So notice when I type 1 and then hit the division key on my keyboard, it automatically puts it in pretty print format. So I just type the number 5 and I have my fraction 1 fifth. I'm going to click the right arrow on my keyboard and type x, subtract 4. And already I have my line drawn. Let me zoom out. So this is the line that extends to infinity because I have not restricted the domain yet. So to restrict the domain in Desmos, I'm going to hit space. You need some curly brackets that look like this. Just to the right of the letter P in your keyboard, you'll see your brackets and your curly brackets. So I had to hold the shift key to get a set of curly brackets. 
and my restricted domain was negative 4. One way to get a less than or equal symbol on Desmos is to click down here on the show keypad icon and then you can click less than or equals, type x, less than or equals again, and then 6. Now I'm just going to click the x here to hide the keypad and now you can see that it drew the line over the restricted domain. Let me zoom in. Now I'm a little suspicious that Desmos might not give me exact values for the range of this function, but I'm going to try. I'm going to click and hold down my left mouse button on my mouse and trace way to the left, and Desmos says at least that when you plug negative 4 into the function, you get negative 4.8. Let's go back and explore this by hand. So by hand, remember I wanted to plug negative 4 into the function to figure out what its output was. Desmos is saying that when you plug in negative 4, you get out negative 4.8. And I want to verify that by hand. So plugging in negative 4 into my function, we have f of negative 4 equals 1 fifth x, where x is going to be replaced with negative 4, and then copy the subtraction of 4. Negative 4 times 1 fifth is negative 4 fifths, and then you still have the subtract 4. Think of negative 4 fifths as negative 8 tenths. I got that in my head by doubling the numerator and doubling the denominator. What this is going to help me do is I know that negative 8 tenths is the equivalent of negative 0.8. So let me copy the minus 4 here. I know that I have negative 0.8, subtract 4, and indeed Desmos was giving me an exact answer because negative 0.8 subtract 4 is indeed negative 4.8. So now I know that this point here is negative 4, comma, negative 4.8. And remember, my goal here is to find the range of f. I just found out that the lowest y value possible on this graph is negative 4.8. So it's this y value here that's of utmost importance. Going back to Desmos, again, I'm suspicious that Desmos may not give me the exact answer, so I always evaluate the function by hand. But according to Desmos, if you click and hold your left mouse button down and scroll to the right, it's saying that the rightmost is 6, negative 2.8. So back to my crude graph. The reason I do this crude graph is that you may not have access to Desmos, and you would need to be able to work this problem by hand, perhaps even without a calculator. So my graph was drawn somewhat to scale. It's conceivable that this could be the point 6, negative 2.8. And don't forget what that is just by looking at the graph. That would be the highest y value that my function takes on. So negative 4.8 is the lowest y value. Negative 2.8 is my highest y value. I do want to verify that Desmos has given me an exact answer by plugging 6 in to the original function. So you can see that most of this explanation in the video was just to explain the meaning behind what's going on. The actual solving the problem so far was to plug negative 4 into the original function, get its y value. Now we're going to plug 6 into the original function to get its y value. Get an idea what the graph is to make sure that the range of the function lies between those extreme values. After all, sometimes you have graphs that just because you have the endpoints doesn't mean that the range is trapped in between those lowest y value and highest y values, the graph could go uh, something like that, for example. So it is imperative that you realize that we're dealing with a line and that the line would be trapped between those two points and wouldn't do something like go outside the range that I specified a minute earlier. So back to plugging 6 in, f of 6 would look like this. I replaced x with 6. 6 times a fifth is 6 fifths, or if you want, 6 fifths can be thought of as 1 and a fifth. And then there's this trick that I like to do in my head by doubling the numerator and denominator. Works really well whenever you have a denominator of 5. If you double the numerator and the denominator, you could think of 1 fifth as 2 tenths. So I have 1 and 2 tenths. 2 tenths can be written as a decimal as 0.2. So this piece of the puzzle right here, 6 fifths, is equivalent to 1.2, which you would have been easily able to ascertain if you had a calculator. But this is at least what I would do in my mind. So I have that this piece was 1.2. And if you take 1.2 and subtract 4, you do indeed get negative 2.8. So that was an exact value on Desmos. Not that this is necessary, but just to show you, you can actually plot points on Desmos by typing left parenthesis 6, negative 2.8 right parenthesis, hit enter, and then if you click on the dot that it put on the graph, it will label that and keep that permanently. 
Likewise, you could have typed negative 4, comma, negative 4.8, pressed enter, and clicked its dot right there to get its label permanently on there. So in a much cleaner example here, I can show you that the lowest y value of this function is negative 4.8, the y values increase and take on all y values between negative 4.8 and negative 2.8. So the range of my original function is all y values between negative 4.8 and negative 2.8 and including those two extremes because x actually could take on the value of negative 4 because of that line there and x can actually take on the value of 6 because x is less than or equal to 6. So going back to here, so I'll finish my problem by saying the range of f is all y values between negative 4.8 and negative 2.8. And in inequality notation, that would look like this. In interval notation, that would look like this, where we would be using a bracket here rather than a parenthesis because we have equality. That the y value of negative 4.8 is actually part of the range because negative 4 was part of the domain. So I'm going to put a comma and then negative 2.8. And if you remember from the beginning of my explanation that the range of the original function f is the same as the domain of f inverse, and by now you may have forgotten that that was the question that I was given, the domain of f inverse then would be the same thing except instead of expressing it in terms of y, since it's the domain, you would express it in terms of x, of course. So the domain of f inverse would be the same as the range of f right here, except you wouldn't use y, you would use x to express its domain. And then an interval notation would look exactly like this. So the final answer to my problem would be that this is the domain of f inverse in interval notation. Now in the math AS problem, if you remember, they said that your answer could be written in the form a comma b. They even told us that it would have brackets. Your job was just to type in the a and the b. So if you know the answer to the problem, then the directions to the problem make sense. You had to type in the a value in the interval notation, which came out to be negative 4.8, and then your b in the interval notation came out to be negative 2.8. So here is the actual final answer to the problem. 